Occasionally in life, you'll see something which triggers you, uh, perhaps which makes you realise you've reached the tipping point, rock bottom, the point of no return. Very often, people decide to finally go on that diet after seeing their holiday photographs on the beach. Well, I think we may have reached that tipping point moment with crime and a devastating headline in today's Mail on Sunday. It truly shocked me. Tesco workers to be offered body cameras following a shocking increase in the number of violent attacks on employees as more than 200 staff fall victim to physical assaults every month. Stories like this are a timely reminder that Britain's reputation as one of the safest countries in the world, a happy and secure place to live, is now in peril. The daily threat of crime is something that we've grown used to and we've sadly adapted to. We've accepted the threat of mugging, for example, as a mundane reality of daily life. In our great cities, people are afraid to wear a nice watch for fear it will be snatched off their wrist at knife point. Some shops selling posh watches now have old carrier bags so that people don't have their new purchase grabbed when they leave the store. The police are now telling people not to take their mobile phone out on the street. How is that normal? How is that acceptable? And people often make arrangements now to go home in groups after a trip to the pub. And women need an armoured tank after dark to feel safe these days. Crime, if left untreated, is like cancer. It worsens, it spreads. We need a culture like we used to have, in which people are afraid of police officers, in which people are afraid to break the law, are afraid of the consequences, afraid of getting caught. Now it's us, peaceful, law-abiding citizens, who are afraid and it's criminals who are laughing in our faces. And why wouldn't they, with a conviction rate of 3% for burglary? This egregious crime and invasion of your home has effectively been decriminalised. Most people who are burgled now only call the police so they can get a crime reference number for their insurers. The hope that PC Plod will apprehend the offenders is non-existent. They admit as much when they finally come round. So criminals know they won't get caught. And victims know they won't get justice. This is a dark place to be. And this is not a Britain that I recognise. Now, our police officers are brilliant. They are underpaid and they do their best. But as a result of the pathetic leadership from their forces, they're turning up at people's houses for an offensive Facebook post. They're spending thousands painting rainbows onto cop cars. And they're dancing in the streets with eco-protesters. And when they glue themselves to the motorway, which is against the law, the coppers ask them if they'd like a drink, if they'd like a sandwich, and if they're OK. They're not OK. They're breaking the law. One of our major police forces, the Met, was once described as institutionally racist, an absolute disgrace. Well, policing in this country is now becoming institutionally woke, and we're all paying the price with our property, our way of life, and our personal safety. Official Home Office data now reveals that police are failing to solve more than 90% of crime, the highest on record. Last year, there were 2.25 million cases that were dropped because the police failed to find a suspect, meaning that more than 6,000 a day were not investigated. That is 6,000 victims. That figure included more than 30,000 sex offences, 330,000 violent crimes, 1.5 million thefts, and almost 320,000 cases of criminal damage and arson. Many Brits are now taking the law into their own hands. They should not. But who can blame them? If the police don't police, someone's going to fill the gap. And don't give me that guff about this being about poverty. What an insult to people struggling with the cost of living to brand them would-be would be criminals. The boss of the co-op, whose own shops see a thousand incidents a day, is very clear that the explosion in shoplifting, for example, is not down to hungry people, but organised criminal gangs nicking supermarket goods, often to sell them on the black market for a fast buck. So with the highest taxes since the Second World War, what exactly are we getting for our money? You're more likely to spot Elvis Presley in your local supermarket 
than a bobby on the beat. This is a national emergency. Britain is fast becoming a dangerous place to live, and that's what I call criminal.